If you like a good movie and love a tasty treat, you could win one of three HD flat screen TVs. This is your chance to snack, watch, and win. Buy a three pack of Act Two popcorn or a 10 ounce Crunch and Munch, plus a Hershey's milk chocolate or cookies and cream bar. Write your name and number on the back of the receipt. Drop it off at Pritchard's, Robinson Road, or Caleb Bahamas Marathon Mall. Then order a movie from Rev TV On Demand, Channel 500, for your chance to snack, watch, and win. Enter today. Promotion ends August 30th. The report on investigations into the alleged abuse of Cuban detainees revealed. And the truth will always set you free. Find out what else the opposition leader and others have to say about it. The commissioner talks about the police force's role in the ongoing investigation. Meantime, two Cubans granted asylum. Plus, NB12 gets a private tour of the Solinden Kindling Room. Those stories and more coming up tonight. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Nikia DeVoe, and this is NB12. Joining us here at Cable 12 Studios. Widespread reaction and even shock today after details of a report into alleged abuse at the Carmichael Road Detention Center were made public by the press. In that report, Defense Force Marines and Cuban detainees outlined the severe beatings allegedly inflicted on several migrants who tried to escape back in May. Up first tonight, Arcandia Dames provides damning highlights of what is contained in that report. On May 31st, just over a week after the alleged incident at the detention center, government officials released a brief statement saying only that there had been an escape attempt and that one Cuban detainee was successful in escaping. It did not hint at any reported beatings following the escape attempt. But the newly revealed report completed by the Defense Force Senior Intelligence Officer says Marines admitted that Cuban detainees were severely beaten at the facility for almost two hours after they attempted to escape. The report was completed more than a month ago, but is only now being revealed. That revelation reportedly came as a shock to some government officials today. One Marine told investigators that a detainee was beaten so severely that he temporarily lost consciousness. That Marine says another Marine left the room where the beatings were taking place, remarking, quote, these young fellas went too far. It was an apparent reference to some of the Marines carrying out the abuse. The Marines said several guards began violently beating three Cuban male detainees after the escape attempt was foiled. He says that after the initial beatings, the detainees were taken into a back room which contains barbells and other exercise equipment. It was there where the majority of the members of the watch guard continued beating detainees. The Marine says initially he held one of the detainees while another Marine kicked and punched him and another Marine hit the detainee with a baton over the head, ears, hips and legs. The Marine stated that when the blood from the detainee started to pour out, he lost his composure and left the room. Moments later, he heard another Marine encouraging young Marines with use of words like prove your manhood by punishing these detainees. After what appeared to be an hour, the detainees were dragged out of the back room and placed near a fence. The Marine says it was at this point that another Marine sprayed pepper spray into the eyes, wounds and bruises of the detainees. According to one Marine, this display was visible to the remaining detainees, men, women and children who were watching from outside their doms. A short time later, the detainees were taken back into the room and the beatings continued by other members of the guard watch. The report also reveals that a detainee claimed that detainees paid money to Defense Force guards to use their uniforms in a video they made reenacting the abuse and paid the guards to provide cell phones with video recording capabilities. One Marine interviewed by investigators also said he was aware and had seen two officers selling phones to detainees. 
According to the detainee, another detainee used one of the cell phones to videotape the reenactment of the beatings. According to the report, authorities later found seven cell phones in a dormitory, as well as over $1,600 in U.S. and Bahamian currency, camouflage clothing, and an immigration jacket. The release of this report follows weeks of protests in Miami by a group known as Democracy Movement. That group had been claiming all along that Cubans had been abused at the detention center. The government of the Bahamas has repeatedly said it does not condone abuse. NB12 understands that government officials are contemplating a public inquiry as the firestorm surrounding this issue continues to build. Reporting for NB12, I'm Candia Dames. Free National Movement leader Dr. Hubert Minnis responding to the leak of the much-anticipated and controversial report's details. Dr. Minnis maintaining that government has led a cover-up on the incident, but finally the truth has come out. Christina McNeil has more from him in this report. The truth always prevails, according to FNM leader Dr. Hubert Menes. Now that the report into abuse allegations at the Carmichael Road Detention Center has been made public, while he continues to call for the dismissal of Foreign Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell, Menes says the entire ordeal highlights the need for a Freedom of Information Act. Irresponsible, reckless, and treasonous. Those are just some of the words used to describe the FNM's position on the controversy and subsequent investigation into claims of abuse by Cuban detainees. Dr. Minnis has taken the brunt of those allegations head on. But now that the abuse report has seen the light of day, Minnis says the truth has come out on top. The truth always prevails, and the truth will always set you free. Um, I must say that I'm a patriot. I believe in democracy. I side with the truth. I side with the truth. I side with nobody else. I side with the truth. And I believe in my God. And my God will always guide me right and lead me in the right direction. Um, as for Bell and those, I'm not concerned about what Bell those say. Minnis and his team have also faced backlash from the Bahamian public in the wake of his statements calling for more transparency surrounding the investigation. But now, he says, all he's getting is support. The public realized that the truth will always predominate over non-truth. I think the response from the public is, um, is supporting. And I I'm very happy that the public are seeing the truth come out and... and the public only wants the truth. Minnis has called on Prime Minister Christie to fire Mitchell and release a copy of the unedited report. Minnis says a Freedom of Information Act is essential in order to prevent these types of incidents and demand accountability from all. Politicians must become accountable. Everybody must become, account become accountable. And nobody is above the law. That is what we push for, so that, so that the law can be applied to everyone. No one is above the law, not even I, not Perry Christie, nobody. We will continue to push for it. The FNM had passed it, we had brought it to Parliament, and we would ask the public to assist us in pushing the government to bring it forth so that the public, reporters, investigators have access to information so that we can move this whole country to more towards a more transparent nation so that things that happen today and things that happened yesterday will no longer happen. And when it comes to his political future in the wake of this incident, Dr. Minnis sent this message to the Prime Minister. I want to send a message to Perry Christie. The Prime Minister had said that I will pay a political price. I only want to say to him that my future, my political career, and my direction is in the hands of God, not Perry Christie. Reporting for NB12, I'm Christina McNeil. Foreign Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell also responding to the release of that report, and he's not happy about it. Mitchell, who is still out of the country, is of the view that the media acted improperly by making those details public. Speaking with us over the phone this morning, he said that defense attorneys will make mincemeat of the people who have polluted the issue and poisoned the well. 
Mitchell reiterated that a full investigation is still ongoing and revealing any information before the full investigation is done prejudices the outcome. Mitchell said he is not defending the length of time it is taking for the investigation to be completed, but said, quote, these things take time. He said the government is trying to convince a cleric to join a review panel and that they have been given 30 days to complete the process. But that's not how Cuban-American human rights group Democracy Movement sees it. Spokesperson Ramon Sanchez is calling the release of the report a victory for the truth. In a press statement released by the group this morning, Sanchez called the findings a victory for the victims, for the noble people and press of the Bahamas, as well as for the many good officers of the law enforcement forces that have seen their good image tarnished by the alleged wrongdoing of a small group of guards. He accused the government of going out of its way to cover up alleged torture, sexual harassment and abuse. Now, Sanchez also added that the group is putting together information to fully recognize every positive step that the government of the Bahamas is now taking to prevent human rights violations in the future, stating, however, that the group is cautious as it still believes the whole truth has not yet come out. Sanchez says the democracy movement is eager to put this episode behind it and begin helping the Bahamas to send the message to the world that it is beautiful again. Well, in light of that leaked report into investigations at the detention center, the commissioner of police is today urging Bahamians to take these new developments with a grain of salt. Paige McCartney has that story. The commissioner said while it's never okay for any law enforcement official to be involved in any act of brutality, Bahamians should wait for due process before forming any final judgments. Although police have minimal involvement in the investigations at this point, Commissioner of Police Ellison Greenslade said he has been kept up to speed on the details of the probe. At this point, the Royal Bahamas Defense Force is taking the lead in the investigation, and Greenslade said despite the leaked reports, the investigation is not complete. And we have collaborated uh, on the investigation, but we have not taken over the investigation. Um, they're very, very competent people, also in the Defense Force. Many of them I know personally. And uh, I, I have no reason to disbelieve the Commodore when he says that um, everything will be above board and transparent. And I'm aware that the Commodore and the ministers had many, many conversations. I'm aware that the light of, of uh, public scrutiny now is shining on the matter. And uh, I think for the sake of the Bahamas, uh, we should allow due process and natural justice. Let it run its course as a proper investigation and wait for that report to be done. The question has been raised on whether the Royal Bahamas Defense Force should be allowed to conduct an investigation into its own officers and that the police should instead be in charge. But Greenslade said at the end of the day, he's confident the probe will be fair and the authorities will provide the Bahamian people with the full truth on this matter. I am of the firm view that everything is being done that should be done at the moment. And, uh, and I believe that there will be a proper accounting to the Bahamian people. I really believe that as commissioner. Foreign Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell said earlier this week that government is awaiting a review of the report by an independent legal aid and is trying to convince a cleric to join a review panel. Greenslade said in these type situations, it's best if a third party is involved in the investigation. If it's a matter where there is brutality, allegations of brutality, or some harm being caused, then there is a, another investigation that, that, that takes place. And that investigation is ongoing. I can't speak to it because it's another arena. Uh, it's not within the purview of the police department. My ministry has spoken to it. My minister, the Minister of Foreign Affairs has spoken to it. Commonwealth Defense Force has spoken to it. But we stand ready uh, to, to provide whatever support is required of us going forward. Meantime, two Cuban detainees who are being held at Her Majesty's prison have been granted asylum in the United States. The pair was due to appear before Supreme Court Justice Carolita Bethel for a hearing on a writ of habeas corpus seeking the Cubans' release. However, their attorney, Roger Gomez, dropped the case on behalf of his clients, Randy Rodriguez and Mauricio Valdez, after the asylum request came through. Gomez tells our news team he's pleased with the outcome. The pair was expected to be released to United States immigration officials today and in the U.S. by this evening.